morning to you and welcome to the start of a brand new week and the start of a brand new day right here on stream tv we believe that your weekend was good well let's poise and get ready uh, to contribute our quota to the development of our nation my name is bismarck brown you can call me bb and i appreciate your time with us this morning on the front page let's take a tour together on the front pages and find out what's making headline news this beautiful third august 2020 and we'll kick off with a daily graphic this morning that comes with a photograph of mrs wendy enyonam adilamte head of the national office of wayek and banner headline says ignore leaked papers wayek ges edge candidates to be focused and the story says the west african examinations council and the ghana education service have urged candidates writing this year's west african senior school certificate examination wasi to be focused and ignore fake examination questions in circulation making reference to some supposed leaked integrated science question papers that were in circulation on various social media platforms over the weekend the two institutions said they were fake and of no value on the front page of daily graphic as well today parliament passes aircraft accident investigation bill and that's on the front page here of daily graphic parliament uh, has passed the aircraft accident investigation and prevention bureau bill 2020 to boost Ghana's quest of becoming the aviation hub of west africa the bill seeks to establish an autonomous aircraft accident investigation and prevention bureau a corporate body to investigate prevent regulate as well as oversee the management of aircraft accidents that occur in the country by the legislation the bureau will be able to carry out investigations and produce results to acceptable international standards and practices of international civil aviation organization that's on the front page here of daily graphic also here Otunfo opens a great enterprise at knust uh, the photograph of Dr. Papakwesi Indum of the PPP is on the front page of Daily Graphic today. I won't contest December 7 election, and that's attributed to Dr. Indum. And the founder of the Progressive People's Party, Dr. Papakwesi Indum, will not contest this year's presidential election due to ill health. He explained that he had not been, been in the best state of health since 2017. In an interview with the Daily Graphic from his base in the United States of America, Dr. Indum said his current state and other challenges did not leave time for politics. He was, however, convinced that the PPP had a new set of leaders to make an impact in Ghana's politics. Quote, the PPP has a younger, vibrant set of leaders uh, ready to make their mark and do well for Ghana. I trust them to take good care of the party and deliver even better results than I was able to lead them to get during elections. Uh, this means, and I'm on quote, this means that the party will be going into the 2020 elections with a new phase uh, since Dr. Indum uh, will not be going. Dr. Indum said the past two years had been particularly difficult physically and mentally for him. So, uh, quote, so I have to undergo treatment in Ghana and in the USA, including the National Institute of Health, where my son is a neurosurgeon. Well, he's spoken about uh, GN Bank and Savings and Loans Company as well. And on issues regarding GN Bank Savings, Dr. Indum said he had to discipline himself to respect the fact that he took advice from high-level people to seek justice in the court. Quote, so I need to let the court process run its course, even though the adjournments are frustrating. But we have a good case, and I have put my faith in God that eventually he will let the truth stand. And that's coming from Dr. Indum uh, from his base in the United States of America. Let's move on to the Ghanaian Times. Ghanaian Times is our next paper. Mana headline, leaked 2020 Wase papers fake. Uh, that's coming from Wayek. BNI CID alerted. You know about that story uh, by now. Also on the front page of the Ghanaian Times, KNUST outdoors 
first female vice chancellor and professor mrs rita akusia dixon has been sworn in as the first female vice chancellor of the kwame nkrumah university of science and technology and addressing um, the professor uh, Utunfo Osei Tutu uh, the second, who is the Chancellor of the University, called on her not to be timid or afraid of what the future holds, urging her to be very strong with uh, the recent most unpleasant history in mind that Santehini intoned. Akosia Jataba Ensuro Abwe Biara Ewo in Wurem. To wait, I urge you not to be faint hearted. Or afraid of what the future holds. Akosia, you cannot forget your great great grandmother, the famous Yasantua, the woman who led the Ashanti Kingdom against British colonization to defend the Golden Stool. Always remember, you share the same ancestral blood, and I see in you the Yasantua of KNUST. Think deeply about KNUST as it is today and as it should be in the near future. Unquote. Uh, Otunfo told uh, the newly appointed uh, Professor Rita Kosia Dixon as the first female uh, vice chancellor of KNUST. Also on the front page of the Ghanaian Times, Western Region embarks on second phase nationwide disinfection exercise. Ghana's confirmed COVID 19 cases hit 37,014. That's also on the front page of the Ghanaian Times of monday let's move on to some other papers daily guide is our next paper and daily guide comes with a photograph of his excellency president uh Kufuado, as well as former president john mahama nana fires mahama he is most incompetent president and president nana dodanko Kufuado has descended heavily on his predecessor ex-president john mahama describing him as Ghana's west president ever daily guide also says mills resigned as president and that's attributed to kwamena ahoy and former minister of local government and rural development professor kwamena ahoy has made a startling revelation about the late president john evans at mills claiming he resigned from office but had to be persuaded to rescind his decision he said former president mills had called him that he was going to announce his resignation because former president flight lieutenant jerry john rollins who brought him to political limelight was disturbing him according to professor hoy the late professor mills had complained to him that he was receiving constant attacks on his personality from Mr. Rollins, founder of the NDC. The ex-minister said the straw that broke the camel's back was a comment Mr. Rollins made in Tamale, uh, which made Professor Mills call him ahoy and said in Fante, quote, I have resigned, unquote. Story continues to say uh, that the only thing that saved this country was that he called to tell me he was resigning. Uh, to quote uh, Professor Hoy, I was at an IEA conference at a brief when he mails called and said, Kwamena, have you heard about what Jerry had gone to say about me in Tamale? And I said, no. Then he added, get the audio and listen to it because I have resigned and I don't want any and I don't want anybody to stop me and quote. Well, Professor Ahoy continues, and I quote, and I said to him, Mr. President, I believe that you have decided to resign, but I also believe that you are not uh, sure whether you have taken the right decision. You want a second opinion, otherwise you would not have called to tell me. I would have heard about it in the media. Professor Hoy said he requested the late pre president uh, to give him time to consult, uh, quote and unquote, his gang and that's how he put it and so and i quote and i saw and so i called captain chikata and he said i should arrange to go and see him and should bring in totobi kwache i'll leave the rest of the story here get a copy of daily guide and continue uh, the rest of the story daily guy says first female knust vc takes office and that's a caption on the front page of Daily Guide. NSS justifies enrollment of teachers on the front page of Daily Guide as well. No complacency in COVID-19 fight. All captured by Daily Guide of Monday. Let's head straight for the informer 
of 3rd August. The informer this morning says fallout from hurriedly organized and obviously disingenuous book launch attempts to demonize Rollins. Voter dangerous aberration Abodakpi warns Kwame Na Ahoy. Mr. Dan Agbodakpi, chairman of the Voter Regional Council of Elders of the National Democratic Congress, has served notice to Professor Kwame Nahoy and his ilk that any attempt to demonize Chairman Rawlings and the good people of the voter region will not be countenanced. Mr. Agbodakpi was reacting to a hurriedly organized and obviously disingenuous book launched last week by Professor Kwame Nahoy the purpose of which will be made clear in the coming days. According to Mr. Gbodakpi, the book titled uh, Working with Rollins is full of factual inaccuracies and discrepancies seeking to demonize the founder of the NDC and the people of Volta. I quote, I have read some excerpts of the book and I am convinced that this is a perilous, ill-timed submission at this point in our party's history. It is in fact, in several instances, a factually wrong and dangerous aberration likely to create tensions in and out. Is the objective of this enterprise to destroy President Rawlings' political legacy? If so, then I can tell my brother and my friend that he is simply wasting his time. And quote, uh, Mr. Agbodakpi said in reaction uh, to the book launch. The informer also says, uh, suspect in the gruesome murder of 90-year-old woman, I was possessed and unaware of all that happened. Do you believe that? Well, one of the seven suspects that have been arrested in connection with the gruesome murder of the 90-year-old woman, Madame Equia Dente, has said that she was possessed and unaware of all that happened, particularly um, the role she played in the murder. Latifa Bumaye told the police during interrogation to establish the circumstances surrounding the gruesome murder of the 90-year-old who was accused of po possessing witchcraft. According to the suspect, she absolutely had no idea of her actions nor of the different warlike clothes she was wearing to commit the barbaric crime. That's on the front page here of the informer commit Ghana to God by Omiya Edges Muslims on the front page of the informer as well. Um, Ghana exports 95 nurses to Barbados in fulfillment of human resources agreement between two countries and that comes to the photograph of Kweku Ajman Menu, the Minister of Health. The Daily Dispatch is our next paper and we turn our attention to the Daily Dispatch uh, right about now. Banner headline from Kwamena Ahoy's Working with Rollins book, How Rollins Appointed Kufo as a Minister Under the PNDC. That's the banner headline story on the front page of the Daily Dispatch. On the front page of the Daily Dispatch as well, Sutseya in the lynching of 90-year-old woman arrested. And it's all captured here by the Daily Dispatch. Let's turn our attention to the Daily Statesman. The Daily Statesman says, and banner headline comes with a photograph of the late Vice President of the Republic, Parkwesi Emisa Arthur. Banner headline, sidelined Emisa Arthur saved Nana. Manasseh reveals how NDC running mate escaped Mohammed's dismissal. And the story talks about how um, ministerial reshuffles were done at the blind side of the late Vice President and the fact that one day he got to know uh, about a ministerial reshuffle in the media, he walked straight to the office of the president, John Mahama, at the time, where he inquired and he realized that Professor Nana Jinopukwajman uh, was one of the uh, ministers who was supposed to go home, but he intervened and she secured her job. The Daily Statesman also says NSS sets record straight on NDC chief propaganda. On the front page of the Daily Statesman as well, 26,000 youth get presidential business support. All here on the front page of the Daily Statesman. The insight comes with a photograph of the Honorable Minister of Special Development Initiatives and Member of Parliament for Ewutu Senior East, uh, the Honorable Hawa Kumsen, registration violence, Kaswa Council of Churches and Dorses gunshots, by Hawa Kumsin, and we're told at a press conference that the council uh, held 
a, a press conference in the uh, in Kaswa in the central region and gave thumbs up to the minister for firing the warning shots which disrupted ongoing voters registration exercise in a center in her constituency. The insight also says pre-primary health care at last, and that is related to uh, Professor Jainano Pukwajuman's first policy statement uh, during her uh, the, uh, the, uh, during the outdooring uh, of the NDC running mates. The insights this morning reports today. The Inquisitor this morning comes to the photograph of the late uh, Koju Owusu Efriye, also known as Sir John. The Inquisitor says, fixing the jigsaw puzzle, what killed Sir John? Something is not adding up. And the Inquisitor says that something is not adding up as to what exactly killed the former Chief Executive Officer of the Forestry Commission. Mr. Friye died on July 1, 2020 at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital and there were reports that he died out of COVID-19. But according to the paper, later events at the nation's premier teaching hospital over how the body of the late former uh, NPP General Secretary is being handled gives the impression that the cause of death could be something different from what Ghanaians were told killed Sir John. The Kolebu Teaching Hospital conducted an autopsy to know what exactly killed Mr. Friye, but the hospital has refused to furnish the family of Mr. Friye with the report. The autopsy performed on the body has sparked memories that Mr. Friye may have died of something different from the coronavirus well uh, the story continues on and on and on and says that COVID-19 uh, patients and those who die out of COVID-19 um, are not released to their families they are even buried sometimes um, without their family being present uh, but the body of Sir John is going to be released to his family if he died of COVID-19 why this according to the inquisitor of today the inquisitor also says well doing some fact checking napo never said school will reopen in september 2020 i'm sure you've seen that uh, making rounds on social media that in september all schools will reopen well the inquisitor has been doing some fact checking and says that was never said by the minister of education simple question for nana ado and npp if former president john mahama is no match for election 2020 why the expensive game plan to malign him? And that's an interesting question posed by the Inquisitor. Let's turn our attention to the business papers of Monday. And the Business and Financial Times this morning says, we can meet pharmaceutical needs, reduce imports, and local pharmaceutical manufacturers are pushing for the imposition of restrictions on the importation of basic drugs that are being produced in the country as a means to protect and promote the local industry to thrive and push the president's vision of making Ghana a pharmaceutical hub. On the front page of the BNFT as well, the banner headline, power subsidy will increase consumers' disposable income as government spends 2 billion Ghana cities on six-month program. And that's coming from IES. Also on the front page of the BNFT, banks ease credit stance to businesses despite high default risk and despite the coronavirus pandemic heightening the risk of debt default by customers, banks have eased their credit stance to businesses for the next two months. Bank of Ghana Credit Condition Survey for June 2020 has revealed 100 million pounds drainage system to address Nimes flooding and waste issues is also a caption on the front page of the B and FT. And if you are an ardent believer in herbal drugs curing COVID-19, you want to listen to this one. No herbal drug has been approved to manage COVID-19. That's coming from CPMR on the front page of the Business and Financial Times. The Economy Times this morning says, credit to private sector by banks slashed. And that comes with a photograph of the governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison. And the growth in deposit money banks, uh, which are also called DMBs, uh, credit to the private sector and public institutions has declined slightly, recording 7,358.1 million Ghana cities or 16.5% in the 12-month period to March 2020, down from 8,594 Ghana cities or 23.9% over the corresponding period 
in 2019. Also on the front page of the Economy Times, uh, reserve money growth up by 21% and growth in reserve money was up by 21.7% year on year in April 2020, up from 7.5% growth during the corresponding period a year ago, according to data from the Bank of Ghana. On the front page of the Economy Times as well, pharmaceutical companies get $200 million private fund to support production. Now I want to believe they will be elated by this. And that's on the front page of the Economy Times. It's time to find out other stories making headline news on the continent of Africa. And inside Africa, we, get, we head straight to South Africa, which has recorded several cases of coronavirus, indeed leading uh, the African Park, as far as COVID-19 is concerned, COVID-19 South Africa virus cases passed half million mark and more than half a million coronavirus cases have been confirmed in South Africa, according to the country's health minister. And uh, the health minister announced that 10,107 new cases last Saturday um, um, has been recorded, bringing the tally to 503,290 along with 8,153 deaths. South Africa is the hardest hit country on the continent and accounts for half of all reported infections in Africa. And if you take out uh, the United States, Brazil, Russia, and India, South Africa is indeed the fifth highest, uh, the, the, the country with the fifth highest number of coronavirus cases. And that is quite unfortunate. Well, also happening in Africa, Kenya Airways resumes international flights after virus caps lifted. And Kenya Airways resumed international flights last Saturday, heading to about 30 destinations for the first time since the routes were suspended in March due to the coronavirus pandemic. The carrier in which Air France KLM holds a small stake resumed domestic flights in mid-July after the government cleared local air travel. So, well, Kenya is leading Africa uh, in easing flight restrictions as far as COVID-19 is concerned. We would have to leave it here and thank you so much for your time this morning. Well, the front page uh, is live on Stream TV every weekday from exactly 6 a.m. Join us tomorrow and keep enjoying Stream TV. Have a super day. My name is Bismarck Brown.